Hey everyone, Angus Wong here. Um, ever since I made that first video to go over the Optolon L Extreme versus the Optolon L Enhance, um, it was actually that very video that made me realize that eventually I am going to grow out of the uh, DSLR that I was using, my Canon 60D. Now I'm definitely not saying that uh, that Canon 60 that Canon 60D cannot be used for astrophotography because it can absolutely be used for astrophotography. But it just made me realize that, you know what? Um, I was starting to get to the point where I needed a little bit more out of my, uh, out of my camera, out of my sensor. And so I'm very happy to say that I finally upgraded to a dedicated astro camera. And in this video, I'm going to spend a lot of time to talk about why I chose the Altair Astro 26C one-shot color camera and show you how it performs. Um, I can tell you that I'm really pleased with this camera. So let's go. So before I actually go over my Altair Astro 26C dedicated Astro camera, I want to take a brief moment to discuss the main differences between a normal camera and a dedicated Astro camera. And to sum up, I can say that the main differences are the uh, user experience between the two. Uh, because when you think about it, they both have similar components it's just that the dedicated astro camera, everything about it is purpose built to do long exposure under low light conditions. Whereas a normal camera was designed to do just about everything. Uh, it's sort of the, the uh, jack of all tray. And this is just sort of like your master of one. So let's go over some of the main differences. Anybody who's into photography or you know, anyone, anyone who knows about camera should be familiar with the fact that when you hold a normal camera, there's a lot of buttons on it already. You can control the entire session either with a built-in intervalometer or an external intervalometer. There is also an LCD screen that you could use to sort of view your object uh, or, or frame up where you are. So all in all, a normal camera is extremely user-friendly whereas a dedicated astro camera you can just tell by the form factor is extremely different first of all there is no buttons on here uh, whatsoever and the only way to operate this is to have a computer connection connected to it at all times and you control your dedicated astro camera via a computer Secondly, there's no room for an LCD screen. So there's no way for you to preview where you are. And depending on your software, you can use your, your computer connection to preview where you are, but that is never as smooth and as easy as getting it directly from your camera. Um, and also the setup, for a dedicated astro camera, it can be tricky, uh, but it's not something that, you know, it's, it's something that you can get used to. Um, so all in all, you know, these are the main differences between a dedicated astro camera. Now, of course, you know, this is purpose built. Um, this is a sort of jack of all tray. And would I recommend a beginner starting off the hobby with a dedicated astro camera absolutely not because of the things that i mentioned earlier um, that the fact that you need to have a computer connection at all times and the setup is not the most intuitive whereas a normal camera most people have one of these that laying at home and these are essentially plug and play and you're good to go and everything can be handled here 
on a camera. Um, and another thing, another reason why I don't recommend a dedicated astro camera for a beginner is because, well, this is a very expensive one trick pony. Um, it basically cannot do anything else unless you're going to lug a computer with you when you go and <laughs> image uh, normally, like normal photography. I'm sure this, I'm sure this can do it, but you know, you need to have a computer connection at all times. Um, and you know, these are pricey. So I think these are the main differences between a normal camera and a dedicated astro camera. And I definitely recommend that if you're just starting out in the hobby, just go with a normal camera because you can do everything that a dedicated astro camera is doing and you'll get instant positive encouragement versus sort of fussing with this for a long time. I, I, I actually got this camera like three months ago, no, four months ago, and I've only just managed to learn how to use this. Um, so it's not easy and it's, and it's kind of expensive and it's a one trick pony but it's a really good one trick pony. So after hearing all that, um, if, you're wa if you're still watching this, you're probably wondering, well, why is he switching to a dedicated astral camera? Because it sounds like those things are a bit of a hassle to use. And they can be, especially in the beginning where you're just trying to set it up and you're trying to learn how to connect it to your computer and then how to actually operate it using softwares. So yes, in the beginning, um, they can be a little bit painful, but once you get over the learning curve, uh, they operate just like any other camera. It's just that you need to control them through a computer. So why am I switching then? You know, what is it about a normal DSLR or mirrorless that isn't providing me with, you know, adequate enough of a, of a picture? And that all started when I did my first video, the L Enhanced versus L Extreme. When I used the L Extreme filter, I realized that it was blocking out so much natural light that I needed to crank up the exposure time on my 60D. However, when you crank up the exposure time, you're also intro introducing more heat into the system of the camera. And this being an older camera, I couldn't just, you know, increase the ISO and compensate for that exposure time because then I'd be dealing with ISO noise. So I knew then that I needed to upgrade to a dedicated astro camera, if, especially if I want to continue using filters such as the L Extreme. And most people, and I hope that if you're considering switching over to the dedicated astro camera, these are your, you know, your two main reasons. You're not switching just for the sake of switching because these things are really expensive. Um, that you need more cooling performance from your imaging system. Most dedicated astro camera comes with thermoelectric cooling that is able to keep your sensor cool to like 10, uh, I'm sorry, negative 10, negative 20, maybe even negative 30 Celsius degrees throughout the entire imaging session. So your images are going to be really, really, really clean. You're not going to have a whole lot of heat related noise. And secondly, and probably the most important thing is that most dedicated astro camera comes with a sensor that was purpose built for long exposures and low light performance. And that is why I mentioned earlier that these cameras are sort of master of one, but they are extremely good at what they do. So that is why I decided to switch on from my DSLR to a dedicated astro camera because I need the cooling feature. I wanted a sensor that was purpose built for low light performance and for long exposures. But however, that doesn't mean that I'm gonna stop using my Canon 60D because there's still a lot to be said uh, when it comes to a setup that is easy to use that you can get going right away. So I switch over to the, to the Altair Astro 26C, but I'm gonna keep using my Canon as well. Oh, by the way, um, if you look around this shot, 
you can get a glimpse of my next review um, and I'm super excited about it and hopefully that video can come out in maybe two weeks um, I want to get you know a really good use out of it and get it and do a really good first impression um, and then follow that up with sort of like a long-term review and maybe like two to three months of usage and then uh, the final part of the series of review will be you know comparing it to what I think is this natural competitor so yeah let me know if you can spot what I'm talking about I mean it's pretty obvious uh, feel free to put it in the comments um, I look forward to uh, seeing some of your responses and with that uh, we can actually talk about my Altair Astro 26C dedicated Astro camera. So when it comes to buying a dedicated astro camera, um, it's just like anything else in natural photography or any hobbies in, uh, in general. It really comes down to your personal preferences and maybe one or two uh, technical traits that you've been wanting to upgrade into. Uh, and this is no difference from my decision to go with the Alter Astro 26C. Um, and, as, and also this was the camera that, you know, it fits my budget and it checked off most of the things that I wanted. And I actually plan on keeping this for a while. So with that, uh, let me go over some of the reasons why I decided to go with the Altair Astro 26C. And I'll start off with the sensor. Uh, this has the Sony IMX571. It is an APS-C sensor and uh, it is one of those newer sensors that comes with 16-bit 16 uh, 16-bit depth and I'll go over what that means and hopefully this is not going to be too technical uh, that's not the point of this of this video but uh, one of the things that I really wanted was to actually stay in the APS-C form factor or larger uh, but unfortunately I <laughs> I can't afford a full frame dedicated astro camera. So the next best thing is to keep using what I'm used to, that DSLR APS-C sensor side, and this has it in here. Um, because I personally like to see as much as I can. I, I don't generally like to crop in. Um, if I really want to crop in, then I'll, you know, I'll crop in and post. But at the gathering of the image no i want to see as much as i can so that's why i wanted to stay at minimum aps-c sensor size then the next thing i wanted was that um i want i want to keep this camera for a while and having image with an older generation dslr for so long that i guess i wanted something nicer so i decided to get the <laughs> latest and the greatest uh, technology and um, I picked this because, like I said earlier, it has the Sony IMX571 sensor in it, and it is a 16-bit depth uh, sensor. What that means is that the more bits you have, the more variations of gray the sensor is able to pick up and register between uh, full-on black and full-on white. Uh, and that translates into um, more variation of colors and smoother transition from one color to the next. Um, I think the previous generation had like what 12 or maybe or maybe 14 bit depth uh, sensor, um, and I think that was going to get you 
shoot, I can't do the math, but you can think of it as two to the 12th power and two to the 14th power. But with this sensor, because it is 16 bit, it's able to produce two to the 16th power um, of variations between full on black and full on white. And I think that comes down to be like 65,000 per color channel. And because this is a uh, one shot color camera, it's got three color channel in there. So you can multiply that 65,000 to the power of three. So um, if I remember, I'll, I'll try to put in some numbers uh, in post editing for this video. The next sort of technical spec that I really wanted was a, a large full well capacity. Um, now what is full well? Well, it's basically, you can sort of pretend, you know, your camera sensor is, you know, acting like a well and you have electrons going into the well and the more electrons I pick up, the more intense that signal is going to be and so forth. And therefore you can kind of think of that pixel being brighter and brighter. Now it gets to the point where that well is completely full. And at that point, because it's already full, even though if you're, even though you're picking up more photons, it cannot register. It cannot tell a difference between, you know, full and then a little bit more full. Uh, as a matter of fact, that, that the extra photons that are coming in into a, an already full well will just spill over to the surrounding, uh, you know, surrounding wells. So that's when you get, you know, blow the stars. Um, and basically once your, your, your well is completely full, you can no longer pick up any more signal. You can no longer pick up any more data. So because I'm upgrading from a DSLR, I wanted my next camera to have a really, really large full well capacity. Um, and I believe this IMX571 sensor has one of the largest uh, full well capacity. Um, I don't remember the number off the top of my head, um, but it's pretty impressive. Um, and then the final technical aspect that I really wanted was uh, a high quantum, uh, quantum efficiency. And there are several cameras on the market that has around 80% quantum, quantum efficiency. What that means is that, you know, 80% of your data actually gets recorded as, I'm sorry, 80% of the photon coming in actually gets recorded as data that you can use for stacking or post-processing or whatnot. And that was considered to be really good. However, I picked this one because this Sony IMX571 has a quantum efficiency of about 90 to 91%. So that means that 90 to 91% of the data coming in, I mean, of the photons, photons coming in, I'm able to use that as actual data. Um, and so those couple of things were really important to me. Um, I wanted to stay in the APS-C sensor side. I wanted a, uh, basically the latest and the greatest uh, sensor, uh, giving me 16 bit depth, large full well capacity, and a really, really high quantum efficiency where the bulk of photons coming in is actually picked up and registered as data. And then the final piece, what really sold me this camera was the fact that this comes in purple. And if you guys know me, you know I had to get a purple camera. As a matter of fact, whoever makes the next purple telescope, I'm gonna buy it. By the way, uh, if you want to learn more about how to pick a dedicated astro camera or just learn about the different specs that, you know, sort of goes into a dedicated astro camera, uh, you should check out OPT's uh, YouTube channel. They have a great video that goes over all the specs of a typical dedicated astro camera. Um, I think that you will be able to learn a lot. And I think that, you know, that video will help you make a better informed decision. So uh, when you have a chance, uh, definitely go check them out. Honestly, I feel like this channel should be the weather channel for uh, San Francisco because I think I spend more time reporting the weather than I do showing astrophotography. But as you can tell, we're completely clouded over. 
and extremely foggy. As a matter of fact, this is a this is a wet tarp, so it's a good thing I cover my mount. But obviously, it's been a couple of days since the last time I uh, I recorded myself, uh, and I really want to show you guys the Altair Astro 26C in action, but. I, I just can't wait any, any longer. I, I don't know when I'm going to get the next clear night. Um, but I did have a chance to use it on a night that I didn't record myself with the William Optic Space Cat 51. And this will be my first official image with the Altair Astro 26C. So I wanted to keep it simple. Um, all I did was point the camera, I'm, I'm sorry, point the telescope at the star Seder and centered it. And I wanted to see what I would get out of it. Uh, it was it was interesting because I'd never really do that. I always have a target in mind. Well, I guess in this case, the target was Seder. And I have to say, <laughs> and I'm almost certain that is entirely the camera. This is probably the best picture that I've taken to date and I am extremely happy with it. And on top of that, now that I'm using a dedicated Astro camera with a cooling feature, I can finally start using the Optilon L Extreme filter. Um, the only other time that I used it was back in December when I first got it. And the one time I used it on Orion because Orion was so bright that I could get away with shorter exposure. But um, a little bit about this channel, I, I always say that you know it's geared towards beginners. It's geared towards people who are just getting started. Obviously, with a dedicated astro camera, I wouldn't say that's beginner level equipment. So therefore, the majority of the images that you see from this channel will still be taken with my Canon 60D, unless I say otherwise. Uh, because I want to be able to relate to those of you who are watching, who are trying to get better, who are trying to get started. It wouldn't make sense for me to say, oh, this channel is for beginners level. And then I show you images taken with a dedicated astro camera. Uh, I just don't think that makes sense. Um, so, and I maintain that, you know, even with just a DSLR or a normal mirrorless camera, you can capture amazing photo, photos of the universe. So my goal actually is to be able to help you guys get to the point where you can decide and prepare you to make that jump from a normal camera to the dedicated astro camera. I mean, if I could do that to all my viewers, that would make me very happy. Um, so, having said all that, I hope you will enjoy my first official picture with a dedicated astro camera, Altair Astro 26C. And this image was nothing special when I planned it because I just pointed towards Seder. But I think this is the best picture I've taken to date. So look forward to more reviews coming up. I've got actually a couple reviews lined up and I'm super excited about them. So um, I wish I can say clear skies to myself, but obviously that's not happening. So clear skies to you guys. Take care.